Lord God, be with us in this recording, mm -hmm. that as we make it uh, for our community, those who hear it might be touched afresh uh, by the deepest of uh, desires that you have to know what you would do and what you would give and what you offer for all to have life. Mm -hmm. Amen. Jesus, having prayed over the disciples, left with them and crossed over the brook Kidron at a place where there was a garden. He and his disciples entered it. Judas, his betrayer, knew the place because Jesus and his disciples went there often. So Judas led the way to the garden, and the Roman soldiers and guards sent by the high priests and Pharisees followed him. They arrived there with lanterns and torches and swords. Jesus, knowing by now everything that was coming down on him, went out and met them. He said, Who are you after? And they answered, Jesus, the Nazarene. The Nazarene. Yeah, the Nazarene. And he said, That's me. But the soldiers recoiled, totally taken aback. Judas, his betrayer, now stood out like a sore thumb. Jesus again asked, Who are you after? And they answered, Jesus, the Nazarene. Where is he? Tell us. I told you that's me. I'm the one. So if it's me you're after, let these others go. This validated the words in Jesus' prayer, I didn't lose one of those you gave. Just then, Simon Peter, who was carrying a sword, pulled it from his sheath and struck the chief priest's servant, cutting off his right ear. Malchus was the servant's name. Jesus ordered Peter, Put back your sword. Do you think for a minute I'm not going to drink this cup the Father gave me? Then the Roman soldiers, under the commander, joined by the Jewish guards, seized Jesus and tied him up. They took him first to Annas, father-in-law of Caiaphas. Caiaphas was the chief priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had advised the Jews that it was to their advantage that one man die for the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. That other disciple was known to the chief priest, and, and so when he went in with Jesus to the chief priest's courtyard, Peter had to stay outside. Then the other disciple went out, spoke to the doorkeeper, and got Peter in. The young woman who was the doorkeeper said to Peter, Aren't you one of this man's disciples? And he said, No, I'm not. The servants and guards had made a fire because of the cold and were huddled there warming themselves. Peter stood with them trying to get a warm. Annas interrogated Jesus regarding his disciples and his teaching. Jesus answered, I've spoken openly in public. I've taught regularly in meeting places in the temple where the Jews all come together. Everything has been out in the open. I've said nothing in secret. So why are you treating me like a conspirator? Question those who have been listening to me. They know well what I've said. My teachings have all been above board. When he said this, one of the guards standing there slapped Jesus across the face saying, how dare you speak to the chief priest like that? And Jesus replied, If I've said something wrong, prove it. But if I've spoken the plain truth, why all this slapping around? Then Annas sent him, still tied up, to the chief priest Caiaphas. Meanwhile, Simon Peter was back at the fire, still trying to get warm. The others there said to him, Aren't you one of his disciples? I've seen him before. He denied it. Not me. One of the chief priest's servants, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, said, Didn't I see you in the garden with him? Again, Peter denied it. Just then, a rooster crowed. They led Jesus from Caiaphas to the Roman governor's palace. It was early morning. They themselves didn't enter the palace because they didn't want to be disqualified from eating the Passover. So Pilate came out to them and spoke. What charge do you break against this man? And they said, if he hadn't been doing something evil, do you think we'd be here bothering you? He's a troublemaker. Yeah. Pilate then said, You take him. Judge him by your law. But the Jews said, We're not allowed to kill anyone. You're the authority. This would confirm Jesus' word indicating the way he would die. Pilate went back into the palace and called for Jesus. And he said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, are you saying this on your own, or did others tell you this about me? And Pilate said, Do I look like a Jew? Your people and your high priest 
turn you over to me. What do you do? My kingdom doesn't consist of what you see around you. If it did, my followers would fight so that I wouldn't be handed over to the Jews. But I'm not that kind of king, not the world's kind of king. Then Pilate said, So are you a king or not? And Jesus answered, You tell me, because I am a king, I was born and entered the world so that I could witness to the truth. Everyone who cares for truth, who has any feeling for the truth, recognizes my voice. Pilate said, What is the truth? Then he went back out to the Jews and told them, I find nothing wrong with this man. It's your custom that I pardon one prisoner at Passover. Do you want me to pardon the king of the Jews? And they shouted back. Not this one, but Barabbas. Yeah, Barabbas. Give us Barabbas. Barabbas was a Jewish freedom fighter. So Pilate took Jesus and had him whipped. The soldiers, having braided a crown from thorns, set it on his head, threw a purple robe over him, and approached him, saying, Hail, king of the Jews. Look who's king. Bow to the king. Then they greeted him with slaps in the face. Pilate went back out again and said to them, I present him to you, but I want you to know that I do not find him guilty of any crime. Just then Jesus came out wearing the thorn crown and purple robe. Pilate announced, Here he is, the man. When the high priests and police saw him, they shouted in a frenzy, Crucify, Crucify him! him. Crucify, Crucify him. him! Pilate then told them, You take him, you crucify him. I find nothing wrong with him. But the Jews answered, We have a law, and by that law he must die. He must die because he claimed to be the Son of God. Now when Pilate heard this, he became even more scared. He went back into the palace and said to Jesus, Where did you come from? Jesus gave no answer. And then Pilate said, You won't talk? Don't you know that I have the authority to pardon you? and the authority to crucify you. But Jesus said, You haven't a shred of authority over me, except what was, has been given to you from heaven. That's why the one who betrayed me to you has committed a far greater fault. At this, Pilate tried his best to pardon him, but the Jews shouted him down. If you pardon this man, you're no friend of Caesar. Anyone setting himself up as king defies Caesar. Now when Pilate heard those words, he led Jesus outside, he sat down at the judgment seat in the area designated Stone Court, or in Hebrew, Gabbatha. It was the preparation day for the Passover. The hour was noon. Pilate said to the Jews, Here is your king. And they shouted back, Kill him! Kill him! Kill him. Crucify, Crucify him. him! Crucify him! And then Pilate said, I am to crucify your king? The high priests answered, We have no king except Caesar. Pilate caved in to their demand. He turned him over to be crucified. They took Jesus away, carrying his cross. Jesus went out to the place called Skull Hill, or the name in Hebrew, Golgotha, where they crucified him, and with him two others, one on each side, Jesus in the middle. Pilate wrote a sign and had it placed on the cross. It read, Jesus the Nazarene, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this sign because the place where Jesus was crucified was right next to the city. It was written in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. The Jewish high priests objected. Don't write the king of the Jews. Make it, this man said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate said, what I've written, I've written. When they crucified him, the Roman soldiers took his clothes and divided them up four ways, to each soldier a fourth. But his robe was seamless, a single piece of weaving. So they said to each other, Let's not tear it up. Let's throw dice to see who gets it. This confirmed the scripture that said, They divided up my clothes among them and threw dice for my coat. The soldiers validated the scriptures. While the soldiers were looking after themselves, Jesus' mother, his aunt, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene stood at the foot of the cross. Jesus saw his mother and the disciple he loved standing near her. He said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then to the disciple, Here is your mother. From that moment, the disciple accepted her as his own. Jesus, seeing that everything had been completed so that the scripture record might also be complete, then said, I'm thirsty. 
A jug of sour wine was standing by. Someone put a sponge soaked with the wine on a javelin and lifted it to his mouth. After he took the wine, Jesus said, It's done. Complete. Bowing his head, he offered up his spirit. Then the Jews, since it was the day of Sabbath preparation, and so the bodies wouldn't stay on the crosses over the Sabbath, for it was a high holy day that year, petitioned Pilate that their legs be broken to speed death and the bodies be taken down. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first man crucified with Jesus and, and then the other. And when they got to Jesus, they saw that he was already dead, so they didn't break his legs. One of the soldiers stabbed him in the side with his spear. Blood and water gushed out. The eyewitness to these things has presented an accurate report. He saw it himself and is telling the truth so that you also will believe. These things that happened confirm the scripture, not a bone in his body was broken, and the other scripture that reads, they will stare at the one they pierced. After all this, Joseph of Amarathia, for he was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly because he was intimidated by the Jews, petitioned Pilate to take the body of Jesus. Pilate gave permission, so Joseph came and took the body. Nicodemus, who had first come to Jesus at night, came now in broad daylight carrying a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds. They took Jesus' body and, following the Jewish burial custom, wrapped it in linen with the spices. There was a garden near the place where he was crucified, and in the garden a new tomb in which no one had yet been placed. So, because it was the Sabbath preparation for the Jews, and the tomb was convenient, they placed Jesus in it.